What's up, everybody? Isaac here, Civil Engineering Academy. Excited to be with you on another podcast episode. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into water resources. We've been doing this for all of the other uh, depth exams for the PE. So if you want to check those out, you can. But uh, if you're going into water resources, this is going to be the one that you're going to want to pay attention to. A lot of the beginning content will be similar among all of those episodes. So just keep that in mind. But if you want to check them out, they should be, um, you know, around. So check them out. Anyway, today we're going to dive into water resources. And the first thing we want to do is just talk about the exam in general, what the cost is, what you're getting yourself into, and all of that fun stuff. So it's coming up right after this. All right, so let's first just talk about the exam in general. So we know that, uh, well, if you don't know, the exam is scheduled for a nine hour block of your time. So it's going to take up your whole day. Uh, it's going to be a long exam. Eight hours of that is actually scheduled for the problem solving it, uh, itself. So just keep that in mind. Um, the eight, the nine hours includes a 50 minute break. You'll have a like a 10 minute non-disclosure agreement to sign and all of that fun stuff. But the actual time to take the test is going to be eight hours uh, to help you solve 80 questions that are broken up into a morning and an afternoon type scenario. So the spec got rid of a designation of what the morning and afternoon is, but the first eight topics in the spec, as we'll go over, are actually the same among all the specifications. And those are your uh, AM type questions. So they're going to cover uh, a breadth of questions that are related to civil engineering topics and ones that we're really going to have to hammer home. I've always preached this, but I think um, if you can crush those AM questions, then it's going to give yourself a huge lift and uh, a lot of weight off your shoulders to pass the PM type questions that come your way because they are more difficult. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's talk about the cost real quick. So in order to register for this exam, it's going to cost you $375. If you uh, kick that can down the road, you reschedule with the NCES. Every time you do that, it's going to cost 50 bucks unless you have a really good excuse uh, to miss your exam. So you want to commit to a date that you're going to take this thing. I always recommend that you should be preparing at least three months, uh, definitely more than that, three to six months of prep time but uh, three months at a minimum. Uh, you want to put in about two to 300 hours into this thing, treat it like a part-time job, study on you know two hours during the week uh, every day, and maybe a little more on the weekend, maybe a four to six hour session. But that's kind of the time commitment that you're going to be putting into this. The water resources is no exception. Um, just keep that in mind. So uh, that, uh, you know, that covers the cost and a little bit about the timing of the exam and all that jazz. You'll want to go to the NCES website, become very familiar with where you're going to be taking the exam, create an NCES account so you can get the reference handbook. It is free to you, so you don't want to miss that. Um, and then once you get that all under your belt and you know where you're going, start looking into what are called alternative item type questions. And this is all posted on the NCES website as well as our YouTube channel. So go check that out too, but it'll give you a look and feel of how they may ask questions. Now, historically, it's always been a multiple choice uh, test and they generally stick to that, but they can ask you other types of questions, including drag and drop, fill in the blank, um, and a bunch of others. So mix and match, you know, now that it's computer-based, they can ask you things in different ways. So. Pay attention to that. Go look up alternative item type questions. Make sure you're familiar with those. But in general, most of the exam is still going to be multiple choice. So just keep that in mind as you start studying. Okay, as for the exam itself, you obviously are you know diving into a computer-based exam. It is not open book, but they do allow uh, a few resources at your disposal that are PDFs that are searchable. And so on the left-hand side of your screen, you'll have one screen. You'll have access to your um, handbook as well as any codes and standards that we'll cover uh, in, as we dive into the specs on your left hand. On the right hand, you'll have the exam itself uh, where you'll be able to select an answer. You'll have a pad of paper or a dry erase, and that's really it. You can bring in a calculator and your ID. Everything else goes in a locker. I guess you can bring some reading glasses if you need to, but that that's it, folks. So. Um, 
just keep that in mind as well as you start preparing for this exam. So that's gonna cover all the exam details that I can think of. Um, let's dive into the specifications that we have going for us for water resources. After we dive into the specs, we'll cover the codes that you need, and then I'll show you resources that you can get, including we'll also cover pass rates for this exam as well. So that's coming up. Let's uh, start diving into the specifications. Turn this thing around. All right, all right, all right, here we go. We've got, um, you know, we're at the NCES website. So when you're here, you definitely wanna create an account for yourself because that's how you get the whole ball rolling. Uh, you get registered with them, start signing up uh, for your exam and follow the requirements to do that, okay? Once you do that, um, you'll come in and you'll start diving into other stuff. They have a great guide for computer-based testing that you can review, as well as checking out the Pearson View Testing Centers. Uh, check out their YouTube channel for the alternative item type questions that I talked about earlier. But there's the breakup of the exam again. Again, uh, non-disclosure agreement, tutorial, exam is actually eight hours, and then you got a break in the middle for 50 minutes. Um, so that's that. Once you uh, get into there, you'll be able to dive into the specifications. You'll be taken to this. And the specifications should be your guide in developing your study schedule and knowing what you should practice. Okay. So let's just dive into this. The first eight sections are going to be your breadth type topics. But effective, these specs are effective January 1 of 2022. They do change frequently. So keep that in mind. But uh, these, like they said here, these have not changed since April of 2015 when they were originally published. A lot of that has to do with the exam going CBT, and they probably just haven't looked at these in a while. But they like to mix these up. In general, though, the engineering topics never really change. Um, it's just the format of where they slap these things. So like hydrology and hydraulics used to be separate categories and then they put them together. Transportation used to be bigger and then they took some away and on and on. So anyway, let's dive into this. The exam's computer based. It's closed book with electronic references. As I mentioned before, you'll have your handbook um, along with your design standards shown. So we'll talk about that. You have nine hours to complete the exam. Really you have 80 questions with eight hours to do that. You have a scheduled break in the middle. I definitely recommend taking that because you definitely need a break. Make sure you get an answer on every problem. So keep that in mind. You can flag problems. There's a little flag button on the bottom left. So make sure you're, if you're stuck, you flag a problem, but definitely get an answer on every single one. They got a list here or the, a note here that they can ask these in SI units as well as US customary. So keep that in mind. Although in general, if you're in the US, they you know, typically stick to the U.S. system. I haven't seen that veer from that very much, but they put that in there. The exams developed with questions that require a variety of approaches, approaches and methodologies, including design analysis and application. So what this means is they can ask questions in a variety of ways. Um, people are always thrown off guard on how much theory that they throw into these. You can expect 10 to 12 questions for the morning and 10 to 12 questions in the afternoon. I mean, that's a that's a lot. That's a big chunk of the exam that is straight up theory. So, um, you know, pay attention to that. And when you're working problems, make sure you really understand the theory behind them because they will test you on that. Um, and then this catch all comment, which is always lovely. The example specified in knowledge areas are not exclusive or exhaustive. It's a catch-all, meaning they could ask you anything they want, but you know they'll generally stick to the spec, right? So keep that in mind. All right, let's dive into this. Category one is project planning. There's four to six questions there. So one of the bigger topics, and this is um, quantity takeoff methods, cost estimating, project schedules, activity identification and sequencing, that's gonna fall into that. Section two is means and methods, which is three to five questions. And that's construction loads, construction methods, as well as temporary structures and facilities. Uh, section three is soil mechanics. This used to be a huge section, and now they've scattered it around a little bit. You have five to eight questions there. It's still a lot of questions. And you've got to deal with lateral earth pressures, soil consolidation, effective and total stress, bearing capacity, foundation settlements, as well as slope stability. Structural mechanics is section four. And there's five to eight questions. Again, one of their larger sections. 
You got to deal with dead and live loads, trusses, bending moments, shear stress, axle loads, combined stresses, deflections, beams, columns, slabs, footings, and retaining walls. So that's a big section. Section five dives into hydraulics and hydrology. Like I said, they used to be separate uh, categories, but now they com combine them. You have six to nine questions now. It's the biggest section in all of your specs um, for the AM. And that's open channel flow, that stormwater collection and drainage, it's storm characteristics, runoff analysis, detention and retention ponds, pressure conduit, as well as the energy or continuity equation. So good stuff there. Section six is geometrics, which is transportation. There's three to five questions now. It used to be a lot bigger back in the day. So three to five questions, they basically test you on basic circular curve elements, which are horizontal curves, uh, basic vertical curve elements, and traffic flow. So keep that in mind. Uh, number seven is materials, five to eight questions there. So another bigger section. And you have soil classification and boring log interpretation. Uh, soil properties, you can see that some of these categories could fall under soils if they wanted it to, or geo. You have concrete, you have structural steel, you have material test methods and spec conformance, as well as compaction. So that's a good one to know. Section eight is site development. You have four to six questions. This deals with excavation and embankments, so cuts and fills, construction site layouts and control as well as temporary and permanent soil erosion and sediment control and impact of construction on adjacent facilities. That was kind of a new one they threw in there over the years, but this is noise or vibration, things of that nature. And then safety, so good OSHA topics, construction, roadside and work zones. Uh, four to six questions for site development. Uh, and that rounds off the AM type questions. So again, those first eight are the same among all specs. Now you dive into your PM type questions, which are all related to, um, well, more related to your water resources topics. So the first one is analysis and design. There's four to six questions there. They want you to deal with mass balance, hydraulic loading, solids loading, which is like sediment loading and sludge, as well as hydraulic flow measurement. And then in number 10 is hydraulics closed conduit specifically four to six questions. So we're diving more into the energy equation. We're diving more into pressure conduits, more into pump application and analysis, wet wells, lifting station, cavitation, as well as pipe network analysis in series, parallel, or loops. So, you know, that's the way it used to be. But now, anyway, for your depth exam, hydraulics, closed conduit, four to six questions. Number 11, we dive into hydraulics, open channel, four to six questions. Uh, you've got open channel flow, hydraulic energy dissipation, stormwater collection and drainage, as well as sub and subcritical flows that you're going to have to study up on. And it looks like the biggest section is six to nine questions coming from hydrology. So, you know, this is covered in the AM portion. So you can see as you study your PM portion, it's going to help you for the AM uh, as well. And in fact, you'll be able to blow through those AM type questions because they should be easier for you. So under hydrology, you've got storm characteristics, runoff analysis, hydrograph development and applications, including synthetic hydrographs, rain intensity, duration and frequency, time of concentrations, uh, rainfall and steam gauging stations, depletions, which is evaporation, detention, percolation, diversions. I love the, the terminology in hydrology. Uh, stormwater management, you've got detention ponds, retention ponds, infiltration systems, and swells. So big section, six to nine questions. Then we dive into section 13, groundwater wells, three to five questions. You've got aquifers, groundwater flow, well analysis, and steady state. Section 14 is wastewater collection and treatment, five to eight questions. This is the one that sometimes people don't love, but you've got a big section there. And that deals with wastewater collection systems, wastewater treatment processes, wastewater flow rates, preliminary treatment, primary treatment, secondary treatment, nitrification and denitrification, phosphorus removal, solids treatment, handling and disposal, digestion, disinfection, as well as advanced treatment. Section 15, and there it looks like there are 17 sections here. 
Section 15 is water quality, three to five questions. You've got stream degrada uh, degradation. Wow, I can't talk. Uh, oxygen dynamics, total daily maximum daily load or TMDL, biological contaminants, chemical contaminants, including bioaccumulation. And then 16 is drinking water distribution and treatment, five to eight questions. So that's another bigger section for you. Drinking water, uh, drink uh, distribution systems, treatment processes, demand, storage, sedimentation, taste and odor, con odor control, uh, rapid mixing. You don't want stinky water. Don't want that. Uh, rapid mixing, flocculation, filter filtration, disinfection, including disinfection byproducts and hardness and softening. And lastly whew, is engineering economics. Let's throw that in for you. You're going to have one question, one to three questions on economic analysis that deals with present worth, life worth, uh, life cycle, or comparison al alternatives. So that's going to round out the entire specification for you. Uh, this is exactly what you should look at and build out your study schedule around. Okay, you want to make sure you hit all of these topics, especially the bigger ones. Uh, you know, hydrology is a, is a big one. So keep that in mind. Um, let's dive into the specifications next. So uh, they got a uh, couple specs. They used to not have any for water resources, which was very nice. They used to not have any for geotech, which was nice. But now water resources has two standards that they list. They also point you to their YouTube video here. Um, so definitely check that out to get a look and feel of things there. Uh, what are some important notes here? The handbook. Uh, you're going to have access to the handbook and the design standards for the entire exam. You don't necessarily need the design standards for your depth or for your breadth exam. Sorry. So you're going to have them, but you don't need them for your breadth portion. Solutions to the exam uh, that reference a standard practice are scored based on this list of this revision year that they have shown. So don't go getting a newer version of these standards. Don't get an old version of these standards. You want to use the year that they are using because that's what they'll test you on. Uh, they list that the NCS does not sell any standards uh, or printed copies. So keep that in mind. You need to beg, borrow, steal, whatever. I don't promote stealing, but you got to get these uh, standards so that you can study with them, right? So the first one's the TSS 2014. It's the recommended standard for wastewater facilities 2014. You want to find that. And water 2018 recommended standards for waterworks 2018. And that's it. And they might, you know, sometimes they have to list these standards, but it might be stuff that you are already aware of and already know really well. Uh, but they have to list it if if it's used. So two standards for you guys that that's not bad. That's actually pretty good. Pretty nice. All right. So we've covered the spec. We've dived into the standards. Let's talk about the pass rates next. All right. So if you do a quick search on the NCES website, you can go and find their pass rates. Now, they go ahead and list that um, they've successfully converted the, uh, you know, the exams to computer based. I think the last one they're working on is the SE exam, the structural engineering. But um, the way this works is um, these exams are administered year round, uh, obviously, with computer based testing. You can take an exam once a quarter. Um, for these exams, pass rates are shown for the January to June or the July to December population. And they update these in July and January. So they're due for an update. Um, right now, they're posting the June 2022 date. So keep that in mind. All right, let's dive down to water resources. So water resource comes in at 1380 for first time takers. It is the second most popular exam to take during this testing period. 64% of people passed, which is the second highest pass rate for first time takers, which is really good. Uh, repeat takers, there was only 39 and the pass rate for a repeat taker was 56%, which is actually the highest among all of the depth exams. So. As a repeat taker, that's a good sign as well. Now, generally, historically, the pass rates for water resources has typically been the highest. 
it usually bounces between transportation and water resources. And so I've done posts and podcasts and blog posts about this topic, but if you're looking, and none of these exams are, are easy by any means, but if you're looking for an exam that may be a tad uh, easier, and when I say easier, I just mean solely based on pass rates, then water resources is a great route to go because you only have two standards and the rest you're going to learn from the handbook and practicing problems. So pretty, pretty nice that you only have to deal with that. So that's the pass rates. Don't get hung up on pass rates. Don't get discouraged by pass rates. It's just general information. Uh, if you have to repeat the exam, you know, pick yourself up, get back on the horse, get on the bus again and uh, start studying again. Try a variety of problems, get new problems um, and keep going. So don't get discouraged. It's just an exam. You're not a horrible engineer if you fell. Okay, just keep that in mind. All right, next up, we're going to dive into resources. So let's talk about that. All right, so now let's talk about resources. And I may be a little biased here, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to point you to our own site, Civil Engineering Academy. The reason why I do that is because we have a resources tab in here that talks about depth resources. And if you go to water resource books, these are recommended books from those that have taken the exam. So we list some from PPI, uh, which I'll talk about. They have good books called Six Minute Solutions. They have additional problems to do. There's other great books in here too. They are linked to uh, probably Amazon or various places, but at least it puts it all in one spot for you. Now, uh, obviously you're gonna want a copy of the NCES practice exam. Uh, it's it's gonna get you a look and a feel of the real exam, but just keep in mind, they're never gonna ask those questions to you because it's part of the practice exam. So just keep that in mind. Um, so good books, um, you know, six minute solutions. There is a water resource and environmental depth reference manual provided by PPI if you wanna check that out. And then I've listed some textbooks because sometimes you need additional help uh, that maybe the handbook's just not gonna give you. And so we've got some textbooks in here that'll, that'll help you with water resources, hydrology and hydraulics, as well as water treatment and things of that nature. So check check that out. We got it all listed there, as well as some other practice exams that are, that are decent. Um, the other place I'm going to point you is just doing a, a quick Google search or Amazon search for water resources depth exam. It'll bring up all the depth exams that they're being sold on here. And if, you know, I'm a big proponent of getting a lot of problems under your belt. So we have our, our exam on there too. And I forgot to mention this, but if you need practice exams, you can also go up here to CEA practice exams, PE depth exam. And you you can come down here and get a water resources depth exam that'll be delivered to you instantaneous. It's a downloadable PDF. We also just released what's called the civil PE exam simulator which we really enjoy, but this gives you a real exam experience with all of your resources on the left, your exam on the right, all the same stuff, alternative item type questions, flag your stuff, uh, it'll run you through it. The only thing difference is when we realize you have a life. And so we allow the ability to pause the exam during the, around the halfway mark. So you can pause and come back to whatever the exam when you need to, so. Pretty cool stuff. You can check that out um, on our website. Again, go just go to CE Practice Exams, go to PE Depth Exam. You can check both those out. Again, go to Amazon. We've got a, a physical exam there too, but you can check out all the other exams there. You can't go wrong with just getting more problems under your belt. Okay. So, you know, grab the exams that are, are applicable to you and you're going to be good to go. The other one I want to mention to you is School of PE. Uh, if you go to civilengineeringacademy.com slash SOPE, you can go to products and new civil exam review guides. They just released these. I'm hoping to do a review on some of them. Uh, you come down to the water resources, water resources and environmental. They have a volume one and a volume two. They've broken it, volume one and volume two into two different books because volume one is your breadth type questions and volume two is your depth type questions covered in there. So there are categories, topics, whatever you want to say. Um, each of these is $330. You'll get both volumes. So uh, for $330, you'll get both of those. But what's nice about that 
is that you get um, everything you need in two books that will cover all the topics that you should know about. Okay, pretty sweet. The other one, uh, if we wanted to go into it, is um, PPI to pass. So if we go to PPI to pass, we can go check this out and you can see under PE exam, and uh, if you go here, use our link, you'll get a discount, civilengineeringacademy.com slash PPI. They have under PE civil, don't get confused by the PE environmental, that's a whole separate exam. Some people want to take that and that's a whole separate thing. So uh, if you're taking the civil PE exam, you're going to go to PE civil, you go to water resources, it'll tell you about, they have um, a library of problems you can get, they have courses you can check out. And uh, the other thing that I want to point to you is their books. So if you come in here and you go to shop now for additional resources, you can see they've got their learning hub. And if you keep scrolling down, they'll have some additional books, including reference manuals, practice exams, study guides, and all of that good stuff. And here's specifically one for the water resources and environmental depth practice exam. Definitely recommend getting that if you're doing this for your depth exam. So go check that out, civilengineeringacademy.com slash PPI. And if you want school PE, check it out, civilengineeringacademy.com slash SOPE. Okay, I think that's going to do it for where to get the resources. We talked about the pass rates. We talked about the specifications. And uh, you should be golden there. All right, so I hope that helped you in making uh, a decision either to take the water resources depth exam or to try something else, I guess. But I think, uh, you know, in terms of depth exams to take when you've only got two, you know, uh, resources that you need to learn, codes and standards, plus you've got your handbook, it's not a bad way to go. Uh, if you're debating what to take, I always would recommend looking at what you do in the workplace first, what's going to help you there because that's going to help you overall in your career. But the second thing I would say, if you're debating which exam to take, is to look at what you just scored well in school. And if that happens to be water resources, then go for it. You know, you'll get the exam done. It'll be a good experience for you because you got to treat this thing as a part-time job. You'll be studying quite a bit for it. So just keep that in mind as you're preparing for this. But hopefully this helped you as we did a deep dive into understanding the exam knowing the specifications, knowing the pass rates, knowing the resources that are at your disposal. If you need additional help, please check us out at civilengineeringacademy.com. We've got full-blown courses for you, which I even I forgot to even mention, but uh, we've got a full-blown course for you at civilpereviewcourse.com that'll help you on your journey to pass this thing. Uh, and it's uh, We've helped a lot of people there. So good stuff there too. Anyway, if you have questions about any of this, please leave a comment below or shoot me an email, Isaac at civilengineeringacademy.com. I'm always ready to help you uh, on your journey to, to become a professional engineer. So thanks for being here. I hope you enjoyed this one and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.